In this video, I'm going to show you what OBS settings I use to record my YouTube videos, well, on YouTube. Now, before you copy every single one of my settings and then maybe something doesn't work the same way for you and you can't remember what you had before, we're going to go ahead and make a new profile. This is what saves different iterations of your settings. So in a profile over here, we're going to go make a new one and you can call it ConCon Con or Test or YouTube. I recommend you test these settings on a new profile first. I usually have profiles for YouTube recording and Twitch as well, but right now I'm doing this on my laptop, so I don't have Twitch over here right now. And if you wanted to save different loadouts of what you have over here, like your scenes and your sources, you can do that through your scene collection. Profile is for your settings, scene is for what you see on the screen over here. So with your brand new profile selected, I'm gonna show you exactly what settings I have here. Open our settings panel. In this general tab, nothing is really that intense or, or needed. However, I'll let you have a look and scroll and change anything you need to if you feel like you want to match mine exactly. Those are all mine, nothing here really affects it. We're not gonna be using the stream tab because we're not streaming. We're doing this for YouTube video recordings. So we're gonna go straight to output. You're gonna to wanna to change the mode at the top here from simple to advanced. We're gonna go into recording. The type will be set to standard. You will set your recording path to a folder like on your desktop over here. Like I have a folder called recordings where all of my recordings are. But if you have a bigger hard drive somewhere that has more space for you to save your files, especially if you're recording for long sessions, I recommend making a folder there and linking this to it so that it saves your files there. Now, the first major thing here is the recording format. I use MPEG-4, MP4 mainly because the file size is really small and it still retains the detail I need. The problem with this is that if something happens to your OBS while you're recording, the video file will probably be corrupt. But we do have a fix for that and we're gonna get there. If you wanna play it very safe, you can go for .mkv, but the file sizes are going to be massive. Expect gigabyte files, sometimes 10 gigs, sometimes even 100 gigs for a file that's maybe over an hour or two hours long in recording. Whereas with MP4, you can expect around like five gigs for about you know an hour or so of recording, maybe even two hours with these settings. The video encoder I'm using here is the NVIDIA Nivink H.264. The part that you really need to look at is the H.264. This is my graphics card. Since my graphics card is a lot stronger than my CPU, I'm using it to record. However, if your graphics card is weaker on your PC and your CPU is a lot more powerful, especially if you're recording games that require a lot of graphics, graphics, sometimes you might actually have to resort to using CPU, which is actually this X264. So if you ever have problems with like frames dropping or the video is not, you know, like OBS is struggling to keep up, you can always switch between the two of these. Like on the laptop, it's probably best to use an H264, whereas if you have a good graphics card, you can go for H.264. For our audio encoder, I'm just using the general one over here, the FFmpeg AAC. I don't really know too much about this, but I've not had a problem with it. For our audio track, I only have one selected here for this case, but in a future video, I'm gonna show you how to separate your audio. For example, like here will only be your game sounds or whatever your desktop hears. And then here, number two is gonna be just your microphone. And then three could even be Discord. So if you have friends on Discord that you're playing with and you wanna edit a video where your friends are over talking, a very important part of the gameplay and you only want the gameplay sound, you can always mute this sound from in an editing app like Premiere Pro or even DaVinci Resolve. But I'm gonna show you that in a future video. So click that subscribe button if you're interested in seeing that. The next two settings are not used over here. We're gonna go down here to automatic file splitting. This is something, like I said earlier, with the MP4 file, that if it crashes at any point, the whole file is lost. We're gonna use automatic file splitting, which means every single time that your recording reaches, for example, this number over here, 15 minutes, I'll actually set it to 10 from now on. So every 10 minutes, it will save the video. And if that video saved, it's safe, it's, it's fine. Nothing can go wrong. So if you're recording for like three hours, it will split your three hours by 10 minute videos. So you should end up with six plus six plus six videos, which is 18 different video files, which also makes it easier to edit because sometimes when you're editing, big files don't process very quickly and sometimes can slow your computer by a lot. So having smaller video files is actually a lot easier to edit in my experience. And then we're gonna scroll down over here. So pause here, this warning is actually telling you about what I told you about with the files will be unrecoverable if 
the, the, the OBS crashes or you lose power or something. So just to be aware of that. Okay, so now for the encoder settings. Now this is the very important part. This determines the quality of the recordings that I'm doing. So I like to use rate control VBR. This stands for variable bit rate, which means it will change as dependent. You'll see my base bit rate, the first one is 15,000 kilobits per second. Essentially, this is 15 megabytes per second which is still very good. Some people might even use much higher. The higher this number is, the bigger your file size is gonna be. And if you're uploading to YouTube, you don't need something too massive because YouTube is going to downscale it quite a lot already. For my max bit rate, I selected 25,000 kilobits per second, which is 25 megabytes, which as you can see is 10 more than my usual bit rates. And this means if there are things that are happening in my recording, if I'm playing a very fast paced game, it will have the capacity to go higher to 25,000 if it needs to capture those intense moments. But if nothing crazy is happening, it will then default down to 15,000, which helps you save on your video's file size. If you don't feel comfortable with these, you can slightly adjust them to be higher or lower as needed though I would not recommend going below 10,000 because then quality starts to get a little bit sketchy for a text that is a little bit smaller than usual. For the keyframe interval, I'm using zero, which is auto, so this will change it as it needs. For preset, I use slow so that it can go for good quality. If you want, you can change this, but I, I really don't notice huge differences when I use the setting. So for me, I've always used P5 slow good quality. And for tuning, I use high quality, multi-pass mode. I use two passes at quarter resolution, or you can go for a single pass, but two passes at quarter resolution is fine for me. The more you put into this might make it take a bit more work on your PC. So if you feel like your PC is already struggling or you're playing a really intense game, rather go for a single pass instead. My profile is set to high. I've got look ahead enabled, psycho visual tuning enabled, GPU set to zero, max B frames set to two. And if we go ahead back to the top over here by the tabs, next to recording, we're gonna click audio. My audio bit rate for track one, two, three, four, five, et cetera, is 160 across the board. I keep everything there. And then we're gonna go into actual audio settings over here. Now these determine what sounds your system is going to be recorded. For example, desktop audio over here, we have it to default, which is basically whatever the laptop or the PC that you're using hears, any sound that comes through your headset or your speakers is recorded through this desktop audio. For mic auxiliary audio, this is going to be your microphone of choice. So if you have a microphone plugged in that you specifically use, you're gonna select that one. There are some other settings here that I haven't really changed, but you can see the settings I've, I've picked for them. You can see the hotkeys I have not used for like muting or push to talk. I'm not currently using those. Let's go on the left side over here and go to video. In this section here, you will have the size that you're recording to. Generally, if you're using a monitor size of 1920 by 1080, which is your classic HD, I recommend recording in the same size that your monitor is at. So 1920 by 1080 is perfect. If you're on a 4K monitor and you want to record 4K, you can set this to 4K values. But for most cases, you're probably going to be using 1920 by 1080. And for this final one here, you'll see your FPS values. Now I've got mine to 60 frames per second because I record my videos in 60 frames per second. But if you feel like your PC is struggling and needs a little bit of extra help, you can set this down to 30 and it will be fine and it will take off a huge load of work from your PC to record these files. But when you can, I would recommend 60 because YouTube is always gonna prioritize 60 FPS at 1080p quality, which is just short of 4K, but it's, you know, it's still very good. It's like the standard. Your hotkeys are just gonna be your keys of choice. Like for example, press start recording and stop recording is just F9 and F9 again to stop. Accessibility, I haven't changed anything. And for advanced, there is nothing that I've changed here, but in case you're interested in what I have, you can see over there. And there you have it. Now you can record games or your screen or whatever you're planning to record with OBS in a quality that has been tried and tested by myself, which I've used for a bunch of videos. Uh, for somebody who's posted like over 4,200 videos, I probably have a little bit of an idea of what I'm talking about, I guess. If you do have any questions, I do reply to every single comment. So ask them down below. I will get to you within like 24 hours. And thank you so much for watching this video.